When we build a custom subwoofer enclosure for a vehicle, we must securely mount it into the vehicle so that it cannot move around. This is obviously for safety reasons, but it also helps us to achieve much better sound. That's because when the box isn't securely mounted, it can actually move slightly when the subwoofer is moving and that can steal acoustic energy. Securely mounting the box into the vehicle prevents us from losing that acoustic energy, which means more output and better sound. I just finished making this new subwoofer box for this 13 inch subwoofer in a Jeep Wrangler. So how did I go about mounting this super heavy box within the vehicle? What special bolts did I use? Let's find out and get started. So the first thing I need to do in the vehicle here is determine exactly what I'm gonna to use to mount this subwoofer box to. Now in my case, in this Jeep Wrangler, it usually has a rear seat back here in the two-door version. We haven't used the rear seat in the longest time, so I'm no longer gonna be using it. I'm gonna be sacrificing all of this room for that subwoofer box. So in my case, what I've decided to use are these guys right here. These are the seat mounts. Now as a disclaimer, this might not work for every application. It's up to you to do your due diligence and determine exactly what will work correctly for you to avoid the subwoofer box ever moving. For my application, I know these are super good and stout. So what I've done is I picked up a couple of pieces of 6061 aluminum. I picked out a particular bar size of this aluminum, which will allow it to fit underneath here perfectly. My plan is to position it a little something like this, and I'm gonna drill and tap a couple of holes on the outside, and I can then bolt in directly with a spacer board that is going to allow us to come up over these. Get some measurements here. I think I'll do about three quarters on each side. So with that transfer punch, I marked a location where I wanna drill. And to drill, I'm gonna be using this drill bit from my drill and tap set. I'll put a link to this set along with all the other tools that I'm using in this video down in the video description. If you're not familiar with what a drill and tap is, the drill obviously makes a hole, but then the tap adds machine threads. So here I've applied a little bit of WD-40 for some lubricant to the tap, and then I carefully work the tap into the aluminum cutting the threads. Once I complete that process, I clean everything off with some compressed air and then I test fit the screw and everything looks good. So I repeat that process in four different total locations on the two bars. So those are sitting in place now and now I've cut a piece of quarter inch MDF as you can see right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start using this square here to transfer some of the different dimensions. I want to plot out the hole that I'm going to need to cut for access so that these can be up a little bit higher than the mounting surface that attaches to those bars. Got the rectangle cut out for clearance for that bracket in the vehicle. And I'm gonna use some old scraps of material. I always keep this kind of stuff on hand and I'm gonna stick it to this piece so I can flush trim it out on the router. Let's take a gander here and see how this fits. Goes over the brackets just like that. Nice, that looks good. So hopefully now if you were confused before, you're starting to get more of a feel what's going on here. Now I can make a hole, shoot through and mount to that bracket. Now the thing is though, this is only a quarter inch thick piece of wood. I wanna actually transfer this to a three quarter inch piece of wood so it's nice and strong. I just use a quarter inch that way. If I were to make a measurement mistake or anything like that, I'm not burning through a whole big piece of three quarter. And in this case, I'm actually going to use that one quarter inch piece of material for clearance for the mounting bolts. I'll show you guys what I mean. Let's get this transferred first. To copy the shape, I'll be using the flush trim bit on the router again, but first I'm rounding the corners using these templates from Mobile Solutions. Because I'll have these two pieces of material stuck to each other permanently, rather than using template tape, I'm using CA glue. If you're wondering why not wood glue, it's because this piece of material is gonna be held in compression underneath the subwoofer box, and I just want it to be glued together as quickly as possible. The CA glue allows it to dry only in about a minute, and now I can transfer the shape. To give my mounting board more of a finished feel, I'm gonna be using this quarter inch roundover bit on each side around the outside perimeter and inside those holes. 
So here we go, the edges are nice and soft with that round over bit. Now I've got my brackets laid out here and I'm trying to determine my hole locations through the wood and I've come across a little bit of an issue. If we look where I positioned my holes on the bracket here, it's a little bit close to that edge, a little bit closer than what I'd like it to be. But no big deal, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shift the bracket inwards a little bit and then I'm gonna make another new hole right here. That way when I mount this other screw through that new hole. Now I have a lot more thickness of material on each side. There we go, that's better. These things happen, no one's perfect, but hey, no big deal, we're able to fix it, no problem. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up and position it, I'm gonna transfer those mounting holes and get them drilled through the board. To perfectly align the center of the holes, I'm using this center punch. And then to make those holes a little bit more pronounced, I'm using a transfer punch. Now my plan is to use this fastener with a washer and this has a little bit of thickness above the board that we need to recess down into it. I make a recess using this Forstner bit. Now I can drill a through hole in each of those center locations for the bolt. I now have clearance for that washer and the head of the bolt and when I go to install this in the vehicle it leaves that top surface nice and flush so that I can sit the box directly on top of it. So check it out guys we've got it mounted in here this thing is strong I can shake it and the whole vehicle shakes it's not going anywhere. So now what we can do is we can make some holes in this that will come up and mount into the subwoofer enclosure. I'm going to need to use a special bolt because I'm only gonna have access to this side inside the subwoofer box to apply the nut. I won't have access underneath. We will talk about what that special bolt is in a second, but first I want to run this wire and I want to thank monthly show sponsor, New Concepts. In custom car audio, we need to make a connection at the battery for our amplifier and power distribution. The New Concepts FBT battery terminals are a unique solution. On screen, you can see that when I don't have the fuses installed, one side of this terminal does have constant power, whereas the other side does not because it is fused. We connect the power wire for our equipment on that fused side, removing the need for an inline fuse. The FBT terminal also allows us to connect this side post adapter, which we can use with our factory wiring so that we don't have to cut it away. With four compression terminal connections and a positive and negative version, the FBT terminals are a great choice for your next system. Learn more at the link down in the video description or at newconcepts.com. So let's get back into it. I'm using some of this New Concepts Karma cable right here. This is speaker wire, and as you can see, it is very big speaker wire. This is actually eight gauge for each strand. So what I'm working on doing right now is inside of the subwoofer enclosure, this wire is prone to vibrations. I don't want it to be making noise if it's vibrating against the side of the box. So to alleviate that, what I'm doing is taking some of this closed cell foam and wrapping it around and securing it with some JK tape. Now you can see it doesn't make nearly as much noise. I took the big mounting plate back out of the vehicle and I've got the subwoofer box actually flipped upside down and I've got this upside down as well sitting on that bottom surface. So that way I can drill my mounting holes that are gonna hold these two pieces together and have everything line up perfectly. The special bolts I'm gonna be using are these bolts right here. These are carriage bolts. What it allows me to do is I'll drill a hole, I'll put this through and you see that square head right there? I can hammer this into the wood and that way it's no longer going to move and I don't have to attach an Allen key or a socket wrench or anything on the back side here. It just holds itself in position. Here's the plate mounted back in position. We got those four studs sticking up that will go through the box and then we'll secure them inside. So that was fun. Got the box positioned in the vehicle. Got each of the studs lined up and you can see right here that I have already attached one just using that washer and that nut. Got the subwoofer mounted in place using some big, strong threaded inserts. If you don't know what I'm talking about, definitely check out my build video up in the corner of the screen. Let's do some test bumping. So in the next video of this build, I wanna start thinking about how I'm gonna make this box look awesome and integrate it as part of the vehicle interior. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know that adding beauty panels is one of my favorite things to do. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to come back and check that out. A big thank you to monthly channel sponsor, New Concepts, along with Bernard, John, Brian, Ali, Jeremy, Doug, Steve, Emmanuel, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for helping make these videos possible. My friends, don't forget to design, build, and install. I'll catch you in the next video.